Hello, gentle people, and welcome to another Sparrow Art Vibes video tutorial. If you've watched any of my videos, some of you are aware that I have a Shopify boutique. I also have an Etsy store. And in my Etsy shop, if you go into the drop down menu, you will see a section titled Best Bar Accessories. And in that collection, I have a party pack entertainment set, uh, a nine or a 10 piece set, your choice. And I have a repeat customer who has ordered two of those sets. One in the colors of red and white for the Delta Sigma Theta sorority, and the other in pink and green for the AKA sorority. And so in today's tutorial, I am going to show you how I completed the pink and green set for her AKA friend. So stay tuned as we go over the materials needed and then we'll get started. So what materials do we need for this project? The first thing we need is a shot glass paddle mold. And then this is my shot glass mold. However, we will not be using this. The reason is these are what the finished shot glasses look like. But the base of these shot glasses is actually too wide to fit on the shot glass paddle. So I am not going to be making resin shot glasses. What I'm going to be doing is decorating a store-bought glass shot glass. So I'm just going to set that there as a reminder that we are not doing the shot glasses in resin. We are doing the shot glasses as glass that will be covered in resin. Then we need the molds for the four coasters. Those are the four coaster molds. And then these coasters, rather than being left loose, we are going to make a holder for the coasters. So that's the mold for the holder. And of course, if you watched any of my older videos, you know that I buy the CraftSmart because of the discounts that I get. So we need our CraftSmart Part A resin, our CraftSmart Part B hardener. Because I'm doing this entire pour at one time, I'm going to be using a measuring bowl. And that means I need a paddle. And then we're going to be doing two colors of mica powder. So I need two paper cups. And then I'm going to be doing some crushed glass in two colors as well. So we need the cups, the little cups. And then we need the stir sticks for those. We need the nitro gloves. And this gift is for someone who is a member of the AKA sorority and their colors are pink and green. So I'm going with the Magic Fly Rose Pink and the Magic Fly Grass Green. So that's our pink and green. And then for a little bit of bling and a little bit of elegance. I'm going to be adding some pink crushed glass as well as some green crushed glass. And I do believe that's everything I need. So let's clear all of this off the table and get started with our pour. Okay, to get this party started, we need to mix our resin. I always mark on my container the amounts that I need. We're going to be mixing 500 milliliters. So that's going to be 250 milliliters of Part B hardener. Two 
250 milliliters of Part A resin. In every video, I tell you to mix your resin according to the manufacturer's instructions. This is the Craft Smart, and their instructions say slowly mix for a minimum of five minutes. So that's what we're going to do. Watching me mix this it would be the equivalent of watching ice cream melt. So I'm going to hit the timer, hit fast forward, and get this mixed. Okay, so now that the resin is mixed, we need to divide it into the cups for our colors and our glass. So we have four uh, a little bit more and I don't know that you can see it in the camera I'm actually saving about oh I don't know that's maybe 30 milliliters I'm saving this for later so the first thing we want to do is mix our pink and again, we're using the Magic Fly Rose Pink. Okay, a nice. And then we are going to do the Grass Green. Okay, and there's our green. And so now we're going to add our pink glass. <clears throat> and I always add my glass, just like my glitter, I always add my glitter to the resin and mix it just like I would mica powder to make sure that each piece of glass, each grain, granular, I don't know what you call it, each cut, each shard, I don't know what you call it. Each piece of glass is covered in resin, that way I don't have any um, air pockets develop because there's no resin in a spot. So that's the pink. And that's the green. Okay, so now it's time to pour. I am going to start with the coaster holder. And because this has like these nooks and crannies, 
um, I found it easier to get my mold out if I'm using a mold release. Um, I got this online. Uh, there's no brand loyalty here, but uh, what is this? Appel, and it says mold release lubricant. And so I'm just going to move it away from the camera. And I spray that. So we are going to, I want the glass mostly in these two cutouts or waves or whatever you want to call them. So we're going to put some green glass on this side for starters. the other side ah that started running together too fast ah that's not what I wanted but we'll work with it I wanted these colors separated on the back side, but whatever. I was moving too slowly, so I am going to start pouring green and pink. Like so. And then I'm going to turn this. I'm going to do some green here. Ooh, I spilt that. Some pink here. And some green here. Ooh, that's, I'm being messy. Boy. This is why when you see me do my, um, whenever you see me doing the, uh, the dominoes, you always see me using the little cups because you have more control with the smaller cups. So I'm just adding, you won't really be able to see this because this is down at the bottom, but we're gonna add some anyway. So we've got, let me reverse these. So we've got pink over here. So that's our holder. Let's move that out the way. And now for the paddle. We'll start with some glass up top. And then we'll add some glass in some other areas. Some glass right there. This is the pink, of course, and we'll add the green on the opposite side. And then we will pour. looks a little like springtime.
And then how you place this in the mold is certainly up to you. There is no real design going on here. Then uh, we pour. And I generally try to pour the color that goes with the glass close to the glass. Then we go back and we start to fill. Now we're just going back using up our glass. I said we were saving some clear and we're saving this clear to move around to put on top of this glass to make sure that all of the glass is under resin. We don't want any glass sticking up. And it also creates some really pretty negative space in your molds. This one needs some more pink. And let's see, why don't we take what's left of this, and I need to mix a little more green over there. Again, I have this clear that I saved, and so we'll mix them, add a little more green.
clear. Now you'll notice these molds are not full. That's because if I fill them, they will not fit in that holder that I created. So we don't need these to be full. So now I'm just going to take this stir stick and just kind of drag it through to just create a little more interest in this design. A swirl or two. And now we'll pop air bubbles with the heat gun. Okay, we will cover this and leave it to cure overnight. It is the next day, so we are going to take the cover off of this. And then this is probably my favorite part of working with resin is the unmolding because what you see here is not the same as what it looks like on the other side. So let's take a look at the back and let's So that's the back of that, and that's the front. That's really pretty. That's the back of that one. I'm glad I went with the two different color colors of crushed glass. This one's popping right out. Well, no, not so much. Okay, so we have the back of this one and then the front. And so since I've done the coasters, let's go ahead and do the coaster holder. And remember, I sprayed this with um, the mold release to help it come out. So let's see if it really makes a, a difference. Ooh. Oh, yep, yep. Oh, that's much easier than the last time. suction. Oh. It's not that it's hard to get out, it's that the shape, it's it's the shape that makes it. There we go. Break that suction. You can see it changing colors when the suction is released. There we go. And that's 
is that? I like that. And then of course these will go in here like so. Okay, so let's put those there. And then the shot glass paddle. Let's see what this looks like. when the suction breaks, you can hear it. Ooh. Okay, so that's the back of our paddle, and that's the front. That's a really pretty set. So let me just clean up right here. Let me just clean up this. Okay, clean work area. So the first thing we do is take a look at the finish. Uh, very nice clean pour here. Really nice. This one is nice as well. This one is nice as well. Very good. And so in addition to looking to see if there's any overflow, which there isn't on here at all, I also want to make sure that none of the glass particles, none of the glass pieces are sticking up. A couple of times, a couple of them, I guess, floated. Uh, these all look terrific. So what we need to do now is just take the Dremel and just go along the edge to soften that. We don't have any overflow. These are really nice, nice, nice clean edges. But again, they can be a little bit sharp. So on every single piece that I do, I always take my Dremel and just run along the edges to just make sure I have nothing sharp. I don't want anyone ever injured uh, using any of my products. So let me get the vacuum and let me get my Dremel and my little COVID mask. And then I'm just going to go around all these edges to make sure nothing is sharp. And I told you I've fallen in love with my little Swiffer dusters. Discover it. They really clean everything. We need to just add our rubber bumps. So let me say something um, about these bumps. A lot of times when I'm on Etsy, I will see people having coasters and they'll say that their coasters are backed with cork. Um, some people put felt, uh, really bad. Uh, people put cork and they say it protects your furniture, which cork does. It will protect your furniture. However, please understand that once cork gets wet, once it gets wet, then it's almost useless because then it gets kind of mucky and it'll start to mildew. Okay. Um, and don't get anything sticky on it. The second thing with using cork is that once it dries out, once cork dries out, it starts to crumble. And then you wind up with like a lot of dust on your, your table. So I don't do cork at all. Um, I do the 3M rubber bumps uh, for two reasons. One, they will last almost forever. And two, they are non-skid. So once I put these on here and you put them on your table, they are not going to slide or move. 
So I'm putting four on each coaster. And these are, diff are a different size from the ones that'll go on those. So on my coasters are the little ones. And I'd have to go check to see what size these actually are. I don't really know. I don't know the size. They come in like millimeters. And when you're putting your bumps on, don't put them right at the edge. If you put them right at the edge, they won't be able to stack. So you want to put them right inside the edge. And that way, when you put them in your holder, they'll fit just fine. Basically, you're putting them... I like these coasters because they have a rim. I have other coasters that are as beautiful, but um, if there's a lot of condensation, it can run off the edge. So I've started, I, I sell probably 80% of the coasters I sell are ones that have a rim on them. And so when you're putting the uh, rubber bumps on, you're putting them inside the rim. The other thing is because these are clear, when you look at this, you cannot see them, particularly where we have this transparent, this negative space, this clear on here. If these were anything else, if you even put cork, it would be ugly. So that's the other advantage of using these is that they are clear. And so it doesn't matter what you put them on, they look good. But whenever I see cork, I'm always saying cork will dry out and it'll get brittle and then it'll start to leave little crumbs, little dust all over your stuff. So those are the bumps for the coasters. And then on my paddle, I have these larger, I don't know if you can tell the difference. Can you tell the difference in the size on those? I'll probably have to zoom in um, so you can see the difference in the size on those. But on these, I use the larger ones. One, two, three, four, and then just one on the handle so that when it's setting on the table, it's nice and level and again it's not going to move and then for the holder now one other thing I see right here and I don't know that you can see it let me I don't know when I sanded that I don't know if you can tell it left a little oh, I've got paint all over my fingernails left a little white edge right there and so I'm going to just take that clear gloss varnish that I love and go right around that edge and you'll see it disappear. Okay, so you know you've seen me use the um, DecoArt DuraClear gloss varnish. Uh, I love this stuff. If you don't want to spring for that, you can always just use some clear nail polish. That works just as well. Um, but I like the varnish and we're just going to put a little bit on the tip of this brush and see if I can do this so you can see how that line how that edge just now you don't see any
I just need to go along this whole And then you'll never be able to tell that this edge was sanded. Again, how you finish your work is as important as doing the work itself. I used to sew. I used to make clothes for people. And I'd always talk about looking at the inside, how people finish their seams. Okay, that looks good. So all we need now is for me to put my labels on these. These are done. And so the next part of this is to do the shot glasses that will go in the shot glass holder. I had an order, as you saw, to create uh, beverage coasters, shot glass paddle, and matching shot glasses. Unfortunately, the company that I purchased my shot glass mold for is not the same company that I get my shot glass molds from. And interestingly enough, these do not fit. The base on these is simply too wide. They do not fit. And so, since the customer wants matching shot glasses for this particular paddle, I then went out and purchased shot glasses. Uh, I guess, there you go. And so these fit nicely. Into the tray, but what we have to do is color these in pink and green so that they look like they belong to this set. So, I, if you saw the other video, had attempted to color another set in red and white and uh, had all kinds of problems. So if we are to learn from our mistakes, then this will be the proof that I have learned. So the first thing I want to do is tape the top edges of each of these glasses just with regular old scotch tape. It doesn't have to be the painter's tape. Only because when a person is drinking, you want to leave that top edge free um, of resin. Now interestingly enough, I make resin, <clears throat> it's funny, I make resin shot glasses but in the interest of being correct, we're just going to, once resin is cured, um, people are concerned, you know, is it food safe resin? Once resin is cured, it's absolutely safe. Um, obviously, you're not going to ingest it, you're not going to eat it. Um, when I say safe, that doesn't mean like chew on it or anything. Um, but it means that you can put your food on a container that has resin and not worry as long as you don't cut into the resin, as long as you're not cutting into it. Once resin is fully cured, it's good to go. So the first thing we're going to do is just cover the edges here of each of these glasses. So when you put your mouth on here, your lips, and this doesn't have to be fancy, we're just tucking that on there to keep that front edge. And then in another video, <clears throat> I 
In another video, I showed how the next thing that I do after I tape these is that I paint the bottom with Peel Tech. Now, you can use, I, I demonstrated that you could use Elmer's glue just as well, um, but I happen to like Peel Tech masking fluid. Mine is no longer fluid. Mine is not, doesn't run. You can't pour it because mine is old and it started to dry out, but I'm going to put some Peel Tech on the bottom of these. That way when we put resin on here, the resin will not stick to the area that's covered with the Peel Tech. Think of Peel Tech as um, liquid painter's tape. And when I did the first set of glasses, I tried to cut painter's tape actually to fit on the glass. Um, and it didn't, it wouldn't stay because these go, this is not a flat surface. This is a curved surface. And so I said, oh, well then let me just go with the Peel Tech because I know I can put this on here. And they call it Peel Tech because it will in fact peel off. You use this, I bought this uh, when I was doing canvases, acrylic pour canvases. And I would put a stencil on the canvas uh, and then cover it in Peel Tech so that when I poured the paint on it, when I poured the paint on it, the paint didn't cover uh, the stencil. That's how I found out about Peel Tech. So it is a masking fluid. Uh, this is latex. In my previous video, I said it was silicone. That was incorrect. This is this is uh, rubber. Ooh, this is liquid. What am I trying to say? This is liquid rubber latex. That's what I'm trying to say. Liquid rubber latex. And again, mine is not liquid. Mine is not pouring because my container is kind of old. So mine has thickened up. It doesn't pour, it doesn't pour anymore. It does not pour. It has more of the consistency Oh, I don't know, a pudding maybe. And so we're just going to let this dry. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me again, Peel Tech. After this dries, then we'll mix our resin and then we'll see if my new holder actually works. Okay, the Peel Tech is dry, so now we're going to attempt to use this new well I don't know how new it is we're going to attempt to use this holder that I made you saw in the other video and see whether or not this works to hold these on without them um, sliding off so they are not a tight fit but they are a good fit so what I'm going to do is cut, um, I set up, we were not using pool noodles anymore, but I discovered, yeah, actually, I can. So let's take a couple of pool noodles. Let's put them on here. Oh, I guess I... Well, let's see. all the way down in there and stick that in there and stick that in there. Now 
that should not slide off. That should be tight enough. This is all the way at the bottom of the glass. This should minimize movement and hopefully when I wake up tomorrow these will not have fallen off like the red ones did. That was just so discouraging to me. Okay, so one thing I already see that I probably need to do is make sure that these are on opposite sides to try and keep the glasses even. Yeah, let's... That these are on the same side. Oh. So that's what we have. Oh, that doesn't look quite even. And then we're going to put this on here. And I have plenty of clearance. And let's hope this time that these stay on and don't fall off overnight. just don't want these to slide off like they did with the red ones. All right, let's get some tape. Let's see, said the blind man. What am I taking it to? So again, trial and error. This is how we figure out what works and what doesn't work. So I went through all of this to cut all of this. So let's get this on here. find out whether or not this works. So this time I'm only mixing a little bit of resin because again the other glasses were heavy. This doesn't look straight.
Okay, and I always mark on my container how much I'm doing. So I'm only mixing 20 milliliters, okay? Just a little bit. So that's going to be, I hope that's in the camera, 10 milliliters of the Part B hardener. And 10 milliliters of the Part A resin. We are always mixing according to the manufacturer's instructions. In the case of Craftsmart, that's five minutes. So, here we go. So now we're going to color this and we're doing one color at a time. When I did the red and the white, I did the red, then I added the white and when I woke up in the morning all my glasses were pink. So now I'm going to do one color and then I'll come back later on before I go to bed, I think. I may wait until tomorrow just because okay and so we are working oh I think this is in the way we are working with the um, magic fly rose pink this is what we put on the beverage coasters and the shot glass paddle. And so we're trying to stay in that same color vein. So all I'm doing initially is coating these. So again, this go round, we don't want it thick and heavy. We just want a light coloring on here. These do not have to be opaque. They can be transparent. And the edge at the top can be ragged because then it'll look Organic, I think is the word everybody uses now to mean more natural.
and you see me scooping the resin off the mat. I had so much left on the other one. It's like that's a lot of wasted resin. I can scoop that up and put that back on here. And once this rolls for a while and it starts to thicken, then you're not going to have the drips. So I'm going to let these turn and then I'll come back and check on them. Like I said, that's how I discovered that the others had fallen off. You don't just put it on here and then go about your business. You do have to come back and check on your work. Make sure everything is the way it's supposed to be, which it was not. So we're going to put the pink on here, and then we'll come back and we'll put the green on but we're not putting them on together because I don't want the colors to mix. And green and pink when they mix are ugly. Okay, it looks like it's not dripping as much, so once it stops dripping, then I'll go on about my business and just leave this on for the remainder of the night. I just decided I'm not going to come back in here and try and do the green tonight. I'm going to let this set and then I'll drizzle the green on tomorrow. Okay, it's about an hour later and uh, you can see that I don't have any drips anymore. Nothing is dripping. These are still, you can see, still good and wet so I can pull some of this from the bottom. A couple of them, like that one looks like it's pulled. Cool. 
Okay, so an hour has gone by. This is still wet. Look at that. And so all I'm doing now that I'm back in here is pulling what's on the bottom up to the top just to stop some of the pooling. But again, it's still it's still going to run down, but at least you won't have globs at the bottom. Yeah, just taking this, pushing this up to the top. And I put my resin in my measuring cup um, before I turned on the camera. And so this has to be mixed. This is, again, 10 milliliters of part A and 10 milliliters of part B. And we're going to mix that for five minutes. And now we're going to be adding our grass green mica powder. Grass green. Okay, so I'm thinking I can go to bed and that these will still be on the turner when I get up in the morning. Uh, I'm satisfied. This is more the look I was going for. Okay. <clears throat> It is the next day uh, and looks like my little contraption here worked. So let's turn this off. Uh, I see that one glass fell and as I'm looking at that I've got to fix that, that edge right there. But let's get these off of here. Alrighty, so I guess when this fell, this must have hit this one right here. Um, so <clears throat> I'll deal with that in a minute. Uh, but yeah, these are they. So then we can go in and just take our peel tech off. Look at that. Look at how easy that is. I'm doing the other glasses with, uh, look at that. This is great stuff. Can't get any easier than that. And so the million dollar question is what do they look like? Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, so the only thing I have to do now is with these two that one's fine okay where's the 
Okay, so let me see if I can I think what I'm going to do, <clears throat> yeah, these look nice. Those are pretty. Those are pretty. That's what we were after. So I think what I'm going to do is actually sand this down a little bit and sand this down and then I'm going to put some clear resin on that. So let me get my sander. some varnish on that. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do, I have to pour some resin uh, in a little while. So when I pour the resin for the next project, I'll go in and just fill in that spot that I sanded. And well, you can't even see the bottom now. And right there, that spot. So that's what we'll do. I'll fill those in. And um, okay, you saw how nice and easily um, the peel tech popped off of those. Uh, I happened to pick up some glasses one day and when I looked, when I held the glass up, um, the inside was colored and I thought, oh, that's nice. So what I'm going to do is paint the bottoms of these pink. Again, I'm always talking about how you finish your work and so I think, um, just like they have red bottom shoes, we're going to do pink bottom glasses. And I am using the Folk Art Enamels, and this is uh, Parisian pink. And what I love about this is that it has a gloss finish, but notice that it says it is dishwasher safe. Now, if you were actually painting your glasses with this, then you would be able to, let me see if I can get it close enough you would be able to, after painting, bake to cure as follows. Air dry the surface for one hour, then place in cool oven, heat to 350, bake for 30 minutes. So if you actually were painting your shot glasses with this enamel, and you, when you finish, put them in the oven, then that would uh, make that paint permanent. 
but again the reason I like this is because this is designed specifically for glass and ceramic and it makes it dishwasher safe so let's paint the bottoms of these So just to have that color in the bottom, oops, makes that a little nicer. All right, so let me paint the rest of these. I would have preferred a lighter pink. This Parisian pink is almost magenta. But I bought my paint in a set. I didn't buy individual colors. I bought it in a set. And so this was the color pink that came in the set. <clears throat> I'll let that dry and then come back and put another coat. Come back and put another coat on these. <clears throat> 